Hello everyone and in today's video we are going to discuss the game between Vishwanathan Anand vs Ian Upamniyashi and we are going to discuss the game by looking at the game and also we are going to analyze it during the game so it's going to be very much fun and very much interesting first of all the credit of the video goes to Chess Base India for uploading this video so let's quickly check out, uh, check out the video so Vishwanathan Anand is playing with the white pieces and Ian Apamnyashi, the, uh, the player who got selected recently to fight against Magnus one more time for the world championship title. It's going to be very much interesting guys. So let's quickly check it out. It's a 5 plus 3 game. A very smiling handshake and Vishwanathan Anand starts with 1e4. And Nepo chooses g6, d4, bishop g7. We have the pop on the board. f4, a very interesting move. So, first of all, both the players are ramping up the move. And we have the perk and e3 move by Vishian. And a bit of confusion by Nepo. Not the best, definitely, because developing the minor pieces of the bishops could be the best. Bishop to g4, pinning up the knight. And Vishi is thinking to play bishop to e2, removing up the pin. And now, a bit of thinking by Ian Apomniyashi. He is calculating something and he came up with the book Bishop into Knight, Bishop into an e5. Great move. Uh, just went for straight for the center. And after f5, d5, which decides to push the pawn because you can't capture the pawn because then the pawn would be double on the isolated e pawn, which is going to be completely bad for it. So he pushed the pawn to d5 and c6. And now um, it's already equal. D C six and it's going to be knight to C knight into C six. White trades the queen. Black grab the queen's back and it's already guys equal. It's an opposite color bishop. Okay, it's going to it's two bishop versus one knight, one bishop, and knight and knight. Uh we should decide to develop the dark square bishop. And here we have knight. So white decides to cast a long side because the knight was hitting the bishop as well as the pawn of c2. And now rook came in c8. So black have uh, completed his all development and now we are seeing the end game. King to b1 by white because it is said that king on b1 after doing a long castle is much safer and a very, uh, very safe move to play. h6, white decides to capture the bishop, uh, white decides to capture the knight. Knight came in the center, king moves to protect the bishop and now we have c3 hitting the knight. Uh, it's now the opposite color bishop, most likely the game is going to be ended in draw. But it's going to be very interesting. It's, all, it's an opposite color bishop which actually makes the 99% of the game equal in many cases. c3 hitting the knight. So Nepo is thinking where to put his knight, there are already many squares for the knight to go on. He grabs the knight back. Just don't miss to watch the facial expression of both the players, which makes the game actually very interesting. And now Vishy is thinking a bit and he decides to play rook d3. His idea is to, he wants to do double rooks on the d5. Nepo went back with the knight. He wants to trade the knight because the knight on d5 is already a very strong pick. He wants to trade the knight. Guys, remember, if you try to capture the knight with the bishop, it's already bad because the knight is better than the bishop in the end game. Knight into knight. And now Wish is thinking whether he wants to capture the knight with the pawn or with the rook. Most likely to capture with the rook because it gives white the open fight. Rook into rook, uh, rook into knight. Will Nepo trade the rooks? Will Nepo trade the rooks? He's thinking a bit. Perhaps he will and perhaps he will not. If he will not, the white will simply play rook to d7 entering in uh, in the 7th file which is going to be extremely dangerous for black. Extremely. So, what will Nepo play? He decides to capture the rook and now it's time for Vishy to capture the rook with the pawn or with the rook. He decides to capture the rook with the rook so that there would be some ideas of playing rook d7 taking control of the 7th file. But now we have rook to c7, not allowing white to control of the 7th rank. King to c2, trying to bring the king in the center. Uh, it's uh, Notice guys, bringing the king in the center is the most crucial part in the chess. b6, a fine move by black. 
completely fine move vishesh thinking to uh, vishesh thinking how to continue he played bishop to e2 he wants to maneuver the bishop to somehow to create some problematic position for black bishop e2 bishop to g5 taking control of the dark square perhaps there could be some ideas of playing bishop c1 uh, hitting the dark square pawn so we have g3 rook to e7 what will white play now wishy is thinking and he went for the move bishop to c4 f4 extreme sharp move it looked like black is going to be passive but now black is the one who is going for the counter attack f5 and the king comes to d3 and now i think black is the one who is going for in for the attack bishop goes to c1 hitting pawn on b2 and a3 what is going to white play what is going to be the white move if you push the b pawn the a pawn is going to hang if you push the a pawn the b pawn is hang what is going to do what is going what is white going to play i there are four versus three on the in the in the in the king side white king goes back bishop comes to d3 and now bishop comes to e3 and it's question which he actually can repeat the position by playing king to d3 and it would be a draw perhaps i think never going to repeat the position but will and go for a draw by, by, by playing king to d3 it's the question he's thinking whether he should take a draw or not most likely it's an opposite uh, bishop which most likely makes the game draw he captures the pawn on f5 g5 and no draw for nepo bishop goes to b5 bishop goes to h1 uh, g1 hitting the pawn on h2 as well as the pawn on g3 he pushed the pawn to h3 and now what is going to be the nepo's next move nepo's thinking like this and is thinking hands on the face and he decides to play h5 stopping g4 from white side in the future now g4 can't be possible uh, move in the future and now i think i would it's going to be very problematic for white actually bishop goes to e2 hitting the pawn on h5 bishop comes to b bishop comes to f2 hitting the pawn on g3 you, if you try to capture my h5 pawn i'm going to capture your g3 pawn and now there would be two connected pass pawns which is going to be very problematic for white so wishy decides to play g4 in this position and fg hg and now h4 by black uh, getting a pass pawn and now it's going to be a very hard time for white to continue the position because it's the pass pawn and three moves away from making a queen so how wish is going to react to it it's a big question how will wishiana try to continue the game although it's an opposite color bishop but it's still a bit tough wish he went back with an rook he wants to somehow get rid of the pawn on h4 bishop goes to g3 uh, uh, g3 king tries to come near the center which which is correct way for playing the end game and now how will nepo continue the game it's a question will he push his pass pawn will he bring his push the pawn to h3 king comes he pushes the pawn to h2 and now what i think the most natural move would be to play king to f3 he plays bishop to f3 which actually was a blunder not a good move trying to bring the king to f3 followed by g2 king g2 and the game would be equal all the black would be slightly better but holdable but this is already bad for white now because now black is actually start to putting pressure on the white king but it looks like it's still a draw game how will black continue king to f6 now king to f7 f2 and now perhaps nepo will try to bring the king near the pawn on g4 trying to create some pressure nepo is thinking thinking and now we have king to g5 and who knows what's what's going on and most likely it's a draw because then it's an opposite color bishop but still very tough for white to continue c4 and a very very confusion faced by nepo he perhaps he saw something very interesting now what is the move that he saw what is the move a face by nepo like this perhaps he saw something 
which is thinking which is seeing nepo's face thinking perhaps which he definitely saw something nepo is thinking perhaps he is doing a long calculation and perhaps he he must have find a very interesting move bishop to c1 aggressive and interesting move giving up the bishop and it's actually the fourth move if you try to push your b pawn a pawn is hanging if you try to push your a pawn the b pawn is hanging you are forced to capture the bishop and now comes one and ones to e4 and the bishop is hanging you can't move the bishop because the king is hanging it's a check and it's already big big problem for white i would say it's a big problem king goes near the pawn pawn takes king catches the pawn king captures the pawn it's 3 vs 3 but pass pawn for black is it a draw or is it winning for black white definitely can't win this or can he what she's thinking how can he how should he continue the game because it's actually completely very tough for white to continue the game as well as it's a blitz game which he is having only 1 minute 30 seconds on the clock whereas nepo is having 2 minutes 44 seconds on the clock it's already very difficult for white to continue the game how will he respond he brings the rook giving a check he brings the rook to g8 perhaps his idea could be to play rook 8 putting pressure on the pawn on a7 perhaps trying to push his pawn on the queen side will nepo push the pawn or will nepo move the king or the rook it's the question pushing the pawn looks a good move and uh, but you push bring the king near the pawn also looks a very good move so how will nepo continue the game it's a very big question and very tricky question the next couple of moves will decide the fate of the game nepo is thinking should he go for the pawns on the queen side to capture the pawns of white it's a big question how is nepo going to respond to the game which is already thinking that perhaps the game is out of his hand rook to g7 king move he thinking what to play rook check king move rook check king move and now black simply gained the pawn and it's it's going to be rook a7 rook 8 king move it's going to be a mate so rook gave a check king move and now the king is hitting the pawn and it's actually falling apart for white everything is falling apart and it's i think it's over for white right? so vishin resigned against iana from miyashi very good game i would say very interesting game played by both the players vishan and iana from miyashi all the it was an equal game but but uh it was very really hard for white to continue the game uh vishin and iana from miyashi talking uh, talking uh talking about the game that vishan and is saying to nepo how should he he has sh- how should have he continued the game uh and yeah nepo is thinking that yeah but still that for winning perhaps like this yeah more the players are like okay yeah well played and yeah and just look at this guy just look at that before the start game a happy smile and starting the game so a very interesting game a very interesting game i would say uh, played by vishian and versus iana pomnyashi and even in the in the draw game nepo tried his best and went for the win so we can already sense the power the fear of iana pomnyashi so it's going to be very tough for magnus this time i would say uh, iana pomnyashi is coming for a revenge for the world championship title will he gain the world championship title or not just tell me in the comment section below and it's going to be very interesting so i'll see uh, see you soon so till then stay tuned and keep watching one shot chess